Hey everybody, I'm Jacob and this is Sam. We are from Make Science Fun. And um, in this series of videos, we've got the um, Thames and Cosmos Chem C3000 kit. And we're going to be going through a number of experiments um, out of the manual that they've provided with the kit. And today we're doing experiments one to through five. to five. Okay, one to five. So I've actually got out the equipment that we need and I'll pop it here and let's do experiment one to five. And the first thing it says, put about five mil of water into this um, test tube. So Sam's got the test tube and he's going to put about five mil of water, maybe transfer it to the evaporating dish so yeah. that you've got a little nozzle. That's a good idea. All of it? Um, no, just some of it because you need to pour in about two centimetres into the test tube. Two centimetres into the test tube, which is about five. Oh, whoa, 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 way, that's about five centimetres. <laughs> that's a bit too much. That's a way too much. Let's have a look. Oh, that's about four centimetres. No, 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 you've got to get less. We need about two centimetres. Let's oh, well, let's try that. That's it. That's about two centimetres or five mil. And we're going to heat it up with the Bunsen burner. Oh, it's not a Bunsen burner. You hold on to that. It's a spirit burner. It's a spirit burner. So I've sort of put the, the wick in the um, all the bits and pieces. It was actually quite tricky to do. Uh, but let's use the funnel to fill this up. Uh, here we go. Sam, can you use what's called methylated spirits or denatured alcohol? Um, yeah, let's pour it all in. Into the... Whoa, 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 whoa that was probably too much. My you mistake. Said all of it. I did say all. I didn't. Yeah, that's perfect. Anyway, yeah. it's definitely full now. And so now you can actually put that wick in. And that fuel will wet the wick and soak into it. And then it will go up the wick. Um, I think what might be a good idea is if we actually, oh, let me get, let me get, let me get, um, the, um, what I'll do, I think this might help it, if I get the pipette, squeeze a little bit of fuel up. Can you get the tracing so I can put the test tube? Sure. Hi. There we go. And Sam wants the test tube rack. So let's put the test tube rack there. Good, I've wet the top of the, the wick. That will help speed up the process mm -hmm. of the water going through. Very good. And Sam can light the spirit burner. It's the first time Sam has ever <laughs> lit a match, it looks like. No, he's actually lit lots of matches before, haven't you, Sam? Yes. Yes. Yes, indeed. There we go. And there we go. So that's the spirit burner burning away. So Sam, pop on your safety glasses that have come with the kit. And we now says to um, heat the test tube. Now, by heat the test tube by pointing it away from us and you sort of keep it moving, okay? Keep it moving like this. So this is experiment one. Heating a little bit of water in a test tube using the spirit burner. And they say in the, in the manual that it's going to cause some bumping. Some bumping. Now, bumping is when the water boils at a particular point, turns into steam and like <laughs> sort of explodes. Ah. And bumping's not... Oh, it's steamy. A bit of steam's coming out. Mm -hmm. Sort of getting them to heat it at the best sort of part of the flame, which is about there, Sam. Okay, okay that's it. Oh. can sort of hear a little bit of... um. Flame up, I guess a little bit of uh, crackling and a little bit of noise happening. I can sort of see some steam coming out. Is there anything what you would call bumping? Is it, oh, like, let's have a look. Stop wiggling it so much. I just want to have a look. Yeah, yeah, it just sort of does bump a little bit. So there's some big sort of steam bubbles forming. and But it's not like shooting out. Anyway, that was experiment number one, Sam. I'll put it in here. Experiment number two is to actually put the boiling rod and see what effect that has, not the other way around. You put the open oh, ender down. Okay. 
put the boiling rod in and see what effect that has when you heat it up. So that's experiment. This is experiment number Ooh. two. Does that have much of an effect? Yeah. Yeah, what's it doing? Uh, making it go faster. Makes it go faster. Well, it was already hot, so it will go a bit faster. But um, I think it actually stops the bigger, the bigger bubbles from forming. So yes, I think the boiling rod actually does help um, it heat more uniformly. Now you never heat, you never heat a dry or an empty um, test tube because test tube. the temperature goes up too high, and it will and crack. It's very likely to crack. Exactly, Sam. Someone's been teaching you. Good science already. I wonder who. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you know how to put this out? I think you put this out by putting yeah. the top on there like yeah. that. Yeah. Good. So that was experiment one and two. Let's go to experiment. You don't like your glasses, do no. you? Do you want to swap glasses? Yep. Let's too try big. that. They're too there. big for you? Yep. There we go. All right. I don't think we need the glasses for the moment no. anyway. Let's head to number three. Oof. Okay. So <clears throat> we're going to need some sand. So sand does not come with the kit. You have to bring your own sand to the party. And it says five, mix five spoons of sand or put five spoons of sand into this container. So Sam, can you five of these? put five of those big spoons Which big into, spoon? yeah, they, yeah, five of those spoons into the container. Sort of put it in like that, that's it. One. Two. This is exciting, isn't it? Three. Nick, minute later. Four. Five. Oh, thanks for spilling it everywhere. <laughs> and <laughs> then you've got to add five spoonfuls of salt. Salt. Okay, so I've got you to put some salt in that little beaker. The salt came from here. And this is iodized oh. table salt. Five. Wow. And Iodine is a chemical that stops us from getting goiters. And so the governments add iodine into your salt to help um, a normal growth of the thyroid gland. So it's there we go. good. So now you'll sort of mix that together a bit. Mix that together. So we now have a mixture of sand and salt. They're not chemically combined. And Sam, it says if you look at it, with the magnifying glass, you might be able to see the sand crystal, or the sand, yeah, they're crystals and the salt crystals. Can you see them separate a little bit? Yeah. Yes, you can. Yeah. So that actually is, oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, I can see crystals. Now the magnifying glass doesn't come with it. the kit. You've got to supply your own magnifying glass, but I can see the crystals of sand and salt. That's experiment number three. Okay, experiment number three. Uh, experiment number four, we need to add 50 mil of water. 50. So how many mil of water is in this container at the moment? About... Well, it's a bit hard to read. 100. 100. So I'm going to pour in uh, 50 mil. That was 25 mil. That's 50. That's 50 mil. So I poured in 50 now mil. And it says mix it with the spoon. So mix it with the spoon. Now, fairly, oh, let's show the people. It's fairly clear to me that that sand of ours is actually quite clayey because you can actually see um, some very fine sediments that have um, come up. It's a little bit, probably closer to a colloid than it is to a suspension. It looks like those and particles. And then it looks clear on the spoon. It does not look clear on the spoon at all. <laughs> all right then, then. Um, Carefully pour the liquid above the sand into another graduated beaker. Okay, so let's pour it into one of these little plastic beakers that comes with the kit. But because of the, um, hang on, because I've got some sediment in there, I'm going to do a little bit of my own thing and get some filter paper. Oh yeah, filter. So the kit does come with some filter paper. And because it's sort of clay and I want to get rid of that some of that sediment, I've got some filter paper here and I will fold it in half, then half again. And then half again. And then half again. I'm making what's called fluted filter paper. And that's what we'll pour. I could actually put that into the funnel, Sam. So grab the funnel. That's it. And let's put the filtered 
filtered filter paper in it and I'll hold it and you pour that in there like that. Yeah. Uh, we'll just start pouring, let's see what happens. You're decanting it Oof. to, wee, that was a lot. No. You're decanting it to start with and if I hold it up, what comes through is fairly clear and colourless. And you can drink it. You can drink it. Well, what will it taste like? Salt. Salty water. So can you drink it, Sam? No. Well, you can drink it. Yeah, you can. I mean, you can drink urine if you want. <laughs> Might not taste very nice, but you can drink it. <laughs> yeah. And so this now is experiment number four. four. Okay, this is number four, where we're separating out the salt water from the sand. Now, I added to the experiment by putting in the filter paper, but mainly because what was in that sand of ours? Salt. Not salt, but oh. what made the sand go all sort of brown? Clay. Clay, that's right. There was some clay, clay here. Clay. Let's move that out of the way because that's a bit in the way, Sam. That's it. Oh, so there we go. We've got a clear colourless solution. The salt, the salt is actually dissolved in the water. The salt's dissolved in the water. And I quite like that. That, that filter paper is actually doing a really good job. Don't you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It takes a, takes a while to go through. And particularly the finer the particles of clay, they will clog up the filter paper. Okay, they will clog it up. So you just hold that for a tick, please, young man. And we will set up experiment number five now, yeah. which is where I get um, the... It's not a tripod, but it's an equipment holder. And we'll get our spirit burner again. And we'll take I'll take off the lid. You want to light it, don't you? Yeah, sure. He wants to light it. <laughs> Here he goes. Good. And let's put our... I, I think we better put our wire gauze down to help spread out the heat. And then tip that water into there. Hold it. Yep. And I'll just whack on my glasses just in case. Whack on my glasses. And this is the evaporating dish. So let's whack the evaporating dish on there. It won't crack. I hope not. And let's put in the salty water like that. Okay. So we've now got some salty water in this evaporating dish. And we're heating it quite directly, quite directly with that spirit burner. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm with that wire mesh, it's actually not a bad heat source. You know, they're like that's that's quite a reasonable heat source there. I'm actually fairly impressed with that spirit burner. I must admit it's better. It's better than what what I thought it might oh, be. Oh. Getting steam coming off. <clears throat> See that? We're getting some steam coming off. The water is very evaporating. That's it. And so this is a separation um, method called evaporation. And the volatile part uh, is actually the water. And so the water will evaporate off. And what's going to be left behind, Sam? Salt. Salt. Salt crystals are going to be left behind. Behind. Now, you don't want to be like... Um, at the shopping centre when you're left behind, do you? I don't know whether I like these glasses. They make me look a little bit nerdy. <laughs> Is there anything wrong with being a nerd? Nothing wrong with being a nerd. If you're a nerd, that's awesome. I'm getting some serious... Um, it's boiling. But it is boiling. And normal fresh water, Sam, normal fresh water at um, normal atmospheric pressure, what, does it, what temperature does it boil at? A hundred degrees Celsius. Celsius. In Australia, we uh, use Celsius, so it boils at a hundred degrees Celsius. Do you know what? If we were to take this to the top of Mount Everest, do you know what temperature it would probably boil at? <laughs> Have a guess. Higher or lower than a hundred? Lower. Lower. Yeah. Lower, because air pressure at the top of Mount Everest is lower. And so there's not as much air pressure pushing down on the water. And so it actually boils at a lower temperature. I've actually seen water boil at 30 degrees Celsius. Yes, it, it, there is a way to make that happen. One day I'll show you. I haven't actually... I, I know how to do it. How? How? You put the Bunsen burner 
like a tiny, tiny flame. Yeah. And then get the heat gun. And then when it's further degrees, quickly take it off. Nah, nah. <laughs> You're dreaming, my friend. You're dreaming. I'm not dreaming. You're dreaming. You're dreaming. I'm not dreaming. So how long will this take, do you think? I don't think the good people out there in uh, YouTube land want to... Um, <laughs> I don't think they want to uh, be watching it the whole time, do they? A minute or two seconds? A minute or two seconds? No, I'm going to do Eight or two minutes? Well, it's probably been so. already going for two minutes while I've been rambling on. Um, <laughs> Sam, what's been one of your favourite science experiments that you've done with me before? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't think that was an experiment, was it? <laughs> no? <laughs> Come on. Um, probably touch powder. Touch powder. I haven't made touch powder with you, have I? Yeah. You're kidding me. Remember how... Oh, when you're a little tiny kid. Yeah, that was a bit dangerous, that, sir. <laughs> don't search, don't search make science fun touch powder. Do it. Do it. You'll see that I have been a little bit irresponsible maybe in the past. Do it. Do not do it. Do it. Whatever you do, do not do it. Yes, do it. I reckon more than 60% of the um, water has boiled off. Now, you're probably sitting at home going, I can't see what's going on. Can you show me? Whoa, 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 whoa. A bit of salt just shot out at me then. But can you see the, the boiling happening in there? Probably not that well. Um, it just looks like boiling water, but to be honest, a salt crystal that just shot out at me, and this is not the best way, this is not the best way to evaporate a solution. It's too quick, it's too quick. Sam, do you know a better way to evaporate a solution like this? It's slower, it's slower. You should be using a water bath. That's where you have a beaker with some water in it on the heat. The water boils and then you put the evaporating dish on top of that. Takes whoa. Well, it's it's a better way of doing it because you don't get the salt spitting out. This is just a bit too dangerous. Probably what's the best thing to do is when you get it like 90% evaporated, which I think is about now. Or oh, when it's yeah. about 90%. Do you reckon it's about 90% yeah. evaporated? That's when you actually pull the heat source away. And blow it out. Oh. Yeah, or, and blow it out. And you actually let the last bit of residual heat in the evaporating basin, use uh, use it to evaporate the last bit. Sam, do you want to get the, can you guys, can you guys see the, the salt crystals in there? Get the spoon. Yeah, get the spoon and scrape out some of those salt crystals. And we could put them on this orange plate. <laughs> get a bit more, get them. Bit, get a bit more. Oh, and so what we've actually done is we've got got back, we've separated the salt crystals from the sand using a process of dissolving, um, decanting, decanting, filtering, filtering and evaporation, and we've ended up with a fairly pure looking salt there. That was experiment one to five. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you another time. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.